Hi, this is Jean Shambly Thomas, and welcome to Passing the Torch. I'm so glad that you're here today. Well, we are going to do a, a bit of teaching today on a subject that I think many of you are interested in, and I want you to stick around no matter what you have heard about the subject, and I want you to travel with me through scripture after scripture, all right? Because I don't want you to have my opinion. I want you to hear what the Bible has to say. And we are going to be talking about the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And we are going to, at the end, talk about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. The benefits. What are the benefits of being baptized in the Holy Spirit? And what about the taboo thing of speaking in tongues? Okay, don't turn me off. All right, if you've been taught this is evil, this is a devil, um, what I want you to do is stick with me, and if we go through, if you give me the benefit of the doubt and go through the scriptures with me, okay, then you make up your mind. <clears throat> it doesn't matter to me whether you accept or reject or, or what you decide. It's just my job to show you what the scriptures say. And then you decide, all right? You decide. So um, let's get started. I want to say a prayer, and then we'll get started. And um, have an open mind. Have an open heart, all right? Nobody's making you believe anything. Let's look at the Bible. Father, I love you, and I thank you for this day. Father, I thank you. It's a good day. Lord, I thank you so much that you have sent the Holy Spirit on the earth as the comforter, as the helper, as the one who helps us to pray, as the one who uh, leads us and guides us into all truth. He does so much, Lord, and he gets so little attention. And uh, today, I ask you to help me to bring out the things that you want today and that you open the eyes of our understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the third person of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit, right? We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we don't often talk about the Holy Spirit. And I do want to thank the viewer for sending in the viewers for sending in these questions. Um, there were uh, a few of you, and I thank you. I hope that uh, we're going to answer the questions. And you may want to, uh, you're going to get educated today, okay? So you may want to take down the scripture references as we go and look them up for yourself. Study them for yourself. Read the whole context of what it's in for yourself. And I'll do the best that I can with the time that we have today. You know, I tell you, uh, it breaks my heart. And this, this I want you to hear. Um, and some of you are new to the Lord and don't understand this. But in the body of Christ, this has been a divisive subject. Okay? Um, and... God wants to do away with this kind of division, okay? So whether you land in one camp or the other, let's not divide. Let's not quit loving each other. Let's not call things out of, you know, we, we shouldn't hate one another over things that are not core. And I do want to say that. Uh, we are going to talk about who the Holy Spirit is first, but you need to know the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is not a core issue to salvation, okay? And if you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit as well. Now, when we talk about the word baptize, let me just look at, I want to show you this, all right? When we look at the Greek, and which, you know, the Bible was translated from the Greek, okay? So when we look at it, the word baptize uh, is the word baptisma in Greek, baptism. And listen to this, consisting of the processes of immersion, submersion, or emergence is used, okay? So, and the Bible talks about different baptisms, you're uh, the baptism of John, the baptism of repentance, the baptism into Christ, which is being born again, and the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is a complete immersion into the Holy Spirit. But let me rewind. Let's start by looking at the scriptures. Now, a lot of people think that the Holy Spirit, ooh, Spirit, 
Ooh, Holy Ghost, you know, and you get kind of a weirded out idea. Okay. The Holy Spirit is not the force. The force is with you. You know, you're, you're the anointing or, you know, it is, he is the anointing, but I want to bring, uh, to bear that the scriptures calls the Holy Spirit. He, okay. He, so he is the third person of the Trinity. Okay. He's not a nebulous, you know, and, and he's not constricted to a body. Neither is the father. The Bible says that God is a spirit. Jesus is the only one that took on flesh. Okay. So we have three in one. They're exactly unified completely. They are one in the same, but they have into three persons. Okay. Let's just say for simplicity's sake, they have different jobs that they do. They have different functions as the Trinity. So what is the Holy Spirit's function? He has specific function. All right. Let's look at John 14, 16. And it says, and I, this is Jesus talking, I will pray to the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Now, this is when Jesus was still on the earth with his disciples, and they were quite upset that he told them he's going to leave, all right? And in another scripture, he says, it's good that I go away, because then I can send the comforter, because you need him, all right? And he shall give you another comforter. Comforter, another comforter, is one of his names, one of his functions. Now, think about it. Comforter. That's nice. That's good. I don't know about you, but I need a comforter a lot in this crazy world we're living in. Don't you? It's good, you guys. This is so good. And God wants you to have the fullness of the benefit of what Jesus sent him here for. So hang out with me. We got a lot of scriptures to go through, but we're going to go through them in a timely manner, all right? John 14, 16, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Woo he is the third. He will never, ever leave us. He will abide with us forever, just as Jesus and the Father, even the spirit of truth. So he is called another comforter. He is called the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Now, there's a, a, a clue there, okay? Uh, the world or someone that is not a born-again spirit cannot receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, okay? That, to my knowledge, is the only prerequisite. You have to be born again. You have to have a born-again spirit to contain Holy Spirit, okay? That's kind of uh, pretty simple there whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Okay? Here's a little bit of a difference, all right? Jesus was telling his disciples, all right, he's with you. He's already with you. He's totally already with you. But he shall be in you. And as we look, Jesus further tells his disciples to not leave Jerusalem until they are, are filled with the Holy Spirit and endued with power from on high at this same time. Now let me, I'm going to jump around in different little places here. I'm going to go to Romans 8, 26. And this is one of the benefits of the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities or our weaknesses, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And I'll get into that a little later. But he helps. How many of you always know what to pray? How awesome is it to have the person of the Holy Spirit, who is God, as well as Jesus and the Father, they are God. Look at uh, Genesis 1.26. When God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, okay? The Trinity is awesome, you guys. And I'm just throwing these scriptures out there for you guys to go look up. Um, but the Comforter, John 14, 26, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father shall send in my name, he, 
I want to point that out. He, the person of the Trinity, is a he. He shall, he's not this force. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said to you. I totally love that. Okay, I'm hitting 60 this year, and I'll tell you what, there are times when the Holy Spirit does. He'll help me remember a scripture, and he'll do that for you too. You know, that's he'll help you remember the things Jesus has said to you. And this is what Jesus is telling his disciples. Can you imagine? I mean, they had been with Jesus for three and a half years. How much did he say on a daily basis? And you see the Holy Spirit, the helper, He's telling his disciples and us as well that the Holy Spirit's going to help you remember everything I said to you guys for the last three and a half years, okay? That's a lot. That's a lot. But that is something that he does for us. He is a helper. He helps our weaknesses and sometimes remembering stuff's a weakness, okay? Um, even for you young folks, all right? I know it. You know you've walked in a room and, and wondered, while you were there. <laughs> what did I come in here for? Where did I leave my keys? You know, we all do it. But anyways, and, and if you, okay, this is just a side thing. If you've ever lost something, it is so cool to pray, Lord, you know where it is. Holy Spirit, show me where it is. I know this one lady, I know of her that lost her keys. And all of a sudden, uh, she was praying to Jesus, where are my keys? And she just had this quick little picture in her mind uh, of her uh, tomato plants and she walked out and looked where her tomato plants were and her keys were right by her tomato plant had fallen out of her pocket when she went to pick them out pick her tomatoes up. yeah you know anyways I love stories like that um, it makes the Lord is so real in our lives and when we hear these real life stories uh, it helps just bring it home right he's not way up there Holy Spirit dwells within us. They are with us, okay? They always see us. We're always before them, okay? God loves us. If you haven't figured that out, God loves you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are, the, they are of one complete mind. They are of one mind. They don't think differently. They don't have different, you know, they do have different functions, but they don't have any shadow of difference between them okay there's no division there's nothing they don't agree on they think the same they are one okay they are one with different functions okay three persons in one all right ephesians 1 13 in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. So everyone that is born again is sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It's right there, Ephesians 1.13. Um, the gospel of your salvation in whom also, having believed, you were sealed. Now we're going to look at scriptures a little bit later where we see that there is a born-again experience, and there is, and I'll show you in several scriptures, there is the immersion, a secondary, where you are completely filled up with the Holy Spirit. And it comes out, the evidence is the speaking in tongues. Okay, now, now but don't turn me off. Come on, now you said that you would listen with me. Just look at the scriptures with me. And if you decide when I'm done, you know, that's up to you. Nobody's, nobody's forcing anything. But I do want you to understand why we that do uh, speak with other tongues and that it's not weird, that it's actually, it, it's one of the biggest blessings of my life. Okay, my relationship with Jesus and salvation comes first. But as far as everyday life, the Holy Spirit helps me so much. There's so many times when I will just lay across the bed. I have no idea how to pray. I have no idea sometimes what is even wrong. And I'll begin to pray in the spirit. And I'll begin to, it just like a well, it bubbles up. And sometimes I'll understand things better. But I know 
that the Holy Spirit praying through me in this language is praying the perfect will of God. Isn't that awesome? The perfect will of God. When I don't know how to pray and I pray and allow the Holy Spirit to pray through me, I can be confident that I'm praying the perfect will of God. So let's continue on. Second Timothy, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows who are his. Okay. If you're born again, you're already sealed with the Holy Spirit. You're, he is already with you. Okay. Nobody's saying that he's not. All right. Let's look at Acts 2 when this really came forth. All right. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they being the disciples, let's see, let me see, I wrote it down who all was there. Who was in the upper room? We need to know that because a lot of people try and argue and say, oh, that was just for the apostles. And when the apostles died, this whole thing went away. Okay. But let me help you understand Acts 113. And when they entered, they went up to the upper room. They were staying where they were staying, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, Judas, the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers, capital H. Did you know Jesus had a lot of brothers? James became the brother of Jesus, his natural brother, half-brother, I guess we can call, because Jesus was the only begotten of the Father. The Heavenly Father was Jesus' Father, but he had brothers by Joseph and Mary, half-brothers and sisters, all right? The mother of Jesus with his brothers. So that would be James, that would be Jude, that would be, we don't have you know how many others they are. I just wanted to point that out, that the ones that received the baptism on the day of Pentecost were not only the 12 apostles, all right? There were others in the room. I believe there was 120, um, but there I had that scripture right there for you, naming them, all right? There was women, and there was the brothers of Jesus as well, all right? When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So they began to speak in another language. You know, you do the speaking, but the utterance, the unction, the words come from the Holy Spirit as the Spirit gave them utterance. They began to speak with other tongues. Now, as we'll see in another scripture in a minute, it's the tongues of men and of angels. This is the language you'll, you'll be. There's times when I'm praying in the Spirit. And I'll literally hear a Spanish word that I know. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. And it's funny because sometimes it's like caliente. Sometimes it's a pastor. When I say that, I know I'm praying in the spirit for my pastor or another pastor. Um, uh, it, it's, it's quite interesting, you know, and sometimes it'll have a, a, a Spanish flavor or a Chinese flavor or a, a just it's tongues of men and of angels. And, you know, I've been doing this 40 years. I can recognize when it goes into an angelic tongue, okay? And it's not, now, angelic means God's angels, okay? We'd be staying away from the fallen ones, all right? As a matter of fact, they don't like it when we speak in angelic tongues because we speak directly to God. And, you know, I don't know that they even understand. I think they're, anyways, it's an awesome thing and it's a holy thing, okay? This is being done, listen to me, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. Holy Spirit. Now, there is another place in Luke. I did not write this one down. I believe it's Luke 11, but I can tell you the little story of it. You can look it up. Um, when Jesus is explaining, if a father, just a regular father, if a child asked the father, for a piece of bread, 
is the father going to give him a stone? Or if he asked him for, you know, something to eat, is the father going to give him a snake? You know, if you ask for a fish, is he going to give him a snake? No. What is the purpose? And he said, if an evil father, an unregenerate, unborn again father, will give his children good things to eat, will not the heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit? We don't have to worry that we're going to get something wicked or something evil when we're asking the Holy Heavenly Father to give us the Holy Spirit. He's in control. You don't have to be afraid, okay? We, we, uh, it's just really important that we don't, don't fear. I, I, I wish I had looked that up. Maybe I will in a little bit. I believe it's Luke 11, but the Father, you know, he will not give an evil spirit. You're not going to get something evil. Um, so don't fear that. Don't fear that. All right, so Acts 1.8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So one of the things that the Holy Spirit does when you are filled with the Holy Spirit is there is a boldness that comes along with it to be a witness. Okay? Boy, it just really changed my life. I'm a shy girl, and it continues, you know, in my natural self. But I have boldness because of the Holy Spirit dwelling in me and giving me the power to be a witness, all right? And he will do the same. He's no respect for persons. He's for everybody. There's nothing special about me, all right? The only prerequisite is that you be born again, okay? So... Let's go to Acts 8.14. Now I want to show you here that it the being born again and receiving the Holy Spirit is I'm going to show you several scriptures. It's two different things. You when you're born again, you do receive the Holy Spirit. He is with you. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. But there is a baptism in the Holy Spirit where you're completely immersed. Baptized means immersion. Okay, just like I read from the Greek, and he uses that word. Acts 8.14, now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they came down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so these are, you know, mixed Jews and Gentiles, there's a mixture there, but they wanted them to receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, he, the Holy Spirit, had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized, immersed, in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's the born-again ex uh, experience right there. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, the apostles, and they received the Holy Spirit. You can see clearly in this, Acts 8.14, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord. They were born again. Then, then, a second act, they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and then it goes on. Simon saw through the laying on of hands. What did he see? I believe they saw speaking in tongues. But we'll go on to some more. Acts 10.44 through 46, the Holy Spirit, uh, while Peter was still speaking these words, this is a different place. Is this Cornelius' house? I believe so. All right. While Peter was still speaking, this is another instance, another place. These words, while Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. How did they know the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured on the Gentiles? Because they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Okay? 
So the evidence of the Spirit being poured out on them was they heard them speak with tongues. It's the evidence. Why tongues? It's the evidence. It is the yielding of our own tongue into it's it takes faith you guys it took faith when you prayed to ask Jesus to be your lord you prayed and you had faith that when you asked Jesus came into your heart right it's the same thing it takes faith when you ask God the third person of the trinity to fill you to baptize you to fill you with the holy spirit you ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And by faith, you receive that. And by faith, you begin to speak in a new tongue. Now, many times, uh, for me, like when I help people to do this, I just have them start saying, praise you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I'm going to demonstrate, and then I'm going to continue teaching, all right? Praise you, Lord. I thank you. Father, I praise you. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit, and in faith, I'm going to speak words that I don't understand with my mind, and I believe and trust they're coming from an unction from your Holy Spirit, who has filled me because I asked in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, that is tongues. And it's funny because, see, even in that, I don't, it bypasses your mind. That is one of the great benefits. You don't know how to play, pray as you ought, right? And now I heard myself say a word, nisi. Okay, now in Hebrew, the word nisi means his banner over me is love. It's a protective. So whatever it was I was just praying or the Holy Spirit was praying through me was for protection. I heard the word Nisi. All right. So I don't know what kind of protection, but the Holy Spirit does. And you know what? I totally trust him that that was a perfect prayer, that it came from the Holy Spirit, that he's giving the words. Do I understand it with my noodle? No, I trust. It's faith. It's faith when we do that and when we trust, okay? And when when I'm done teaching and you get off here, you can do that all by yourself. It's the same as your, when you're born again experience. You ask, you believe in faith. You ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. He will, and you step into that by faith, okay? All right, let me continue on. Uh, for they heard them, Acts 10, 46, they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter asked, Can anyone forbid water that they should not be baptized, who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So one of the arguments against, uh, one of the arguments out there, and you know that, guys, this is something the devil fights harder than anything else. Why? Because it empowers you. And I'm going to get into other scriptures where it said, But he who speaks with tongues edifies himself, builds up his own spirit. Like for me, when I get weak, I'm worn out, I'm tired, I'll just lay across the bed and pray in the spirit, pray in other tongues. And I can feel myself, it's like charging your spirit battery, your spiritual battery. And this is what 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, He who speaks with tongues edifies himself, building up his spirit. It's a great way to overcome depression too, okay? And there's times when you're praying in the spirit and you connect with the Holy Spirit, his feelings, or you'll connect with what you're praying for. Um, it's just a very intimate place you can go with God. And it is completely the apostles did it, you guys. The disciples did it. It's all over the Bible. But Satan has fought this harder than most things because it is empowering. All right? John the Baptist said, when Jesus comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. The devil don't like fire. The devil doesn't like for you to be in a depressed state and to have this gift in you and to be able to pray and get that depression off of you 
Worship will do that as well. And let me tell you, some of you can get baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can sing in other tongues as well. It's a beautiful way to worship God. You can sing. So maybe that will help some of you as you enter in uh, to sing your language. But it says here, some of the arguments is up. Oh, it was just for the apostles and it passed away when the apostles died. Okay, well, first we know in the upper room that got filled on the day of Pentecost was more than just the apostles. There was women and the brothers of Christ. And, you know, I, I know other places I didn't get it out. There's more. Um, but look what Peter says. Can anyone forbid water, he's talking about water baptism and uh, the Holy Spirit, that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Now he is talking about Gentiles. This is Peter. I believe this is Cornelius's house. Um, and they have received, the Gentiles received it just like the apostles. Right there it is. So that nullifies, if anybody said, oh, only the apostles got this, that's a second witness, a second scripture that nullifies that thought. Okay, let's move on. Acts 19, I like this one, shows it very clearly. It's two different events, the born again experience and then the complete immersion, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And it happened, Acts 19, 19, and it happened, oh, excuse me, Acts 19, I think it's 1. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? A lot of people get born again and get filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time, okay? And they answered him and said, We've not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Okay, so I grew up in a denominational church and I didn't know for decades, for many, many years that there was a secondary, there was a Holy Spirit. I didn't know about the Holy Spirit. It wasn't taught in the church that I grew up in. Okay, but something funny did happen. The, the choir director and the buzz was all around, got filled with the Holy Spirit and I heard it then. So, uh, uh, there's a quest, you know, when, when you seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open to you, all right? Ask and you shall receive. Sometimes there's a seeking and a finding and a knocking and a asking, right? Okay, let me go back, Acts 19, and finding some disciples, he said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They said, we've not as much heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what were you baptized then? They sit into John's baptism. That's uh, repentance is what John preached. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Baptized, immersed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Born again. That's the born again Jesus. The Lord Jesus is making Jesus your Lord, your born again experience, being having Jesus come into your heart. That is the baptism of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid, now this is secondary, okay? First, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Paul, secondary event, laid his hands on them. The Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied, which we won't get into that. And they spoke with tongues. Speaking in tongues was the evidence that the Holy Spirit had completely immersed them. They were, he came in and they were completely immersed, filled up with the Holy Spirit. We get a measure of the Holy Spirit when we're born again. He is with us, okay, okay, and we're sealed at our born again experience. But there is a complete immersion, okay? The word baptism means immersed, all right? So we go to Mark 16, 17, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. These signs will follow those that believe. They will speak with new tongues, okay? 
Now, a lot of you go, what about all the rest of that stuff, you know? Well, it's all true. It's scripture. It's all true, all right? And you say, have you ever cast out a demon? Yeah. Maybe I'll tell you guys about it one of these days. Maybe I'll teach about that. Uh, they will take up serpents. Have I done that? No. Hate snakes. But you know what? The Apostle Paul needed that scripture because he picked up a stack of wood and a viper bit him. And this whole island watched it and expected Paul to die. But it says they will take up serpents uh, and it will by no means hurt them. The viper bit Paul and he didn't die. And there was revival on that island because they were freaked out. How come? Now, Paul knew Jesus had said this. Paul, I believe, was in faith on this very thing. So if he said they will take up serpents just for Paul, he did it. I don't plan on taking up serpents. <laughs> but if something happened and I got bit, I would believe that it would by no means hurt me. And it says, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall by no means hurt them. Okay? So there are certain protections that come with those of us that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You say, have you ever done that? Yes. Okay? And we'll get into that. Okay? Um, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. My point, these signs shall follow Follow, follow, follow. Someone asked me the question, and I want to answer it. Is there a time frame for getting baptized? And I'm not sure whether you were asking about water or the Holy Spirit. But no, there's not. Um, it was, I think, just my personal experience. Uh, five years between the time when I received Jesus, prayed the sinner's prayer, accepted Jesus as Lord, and five years later, at the age of 13, and then at 18, I surrendered to Christ. And then I was filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized with the Holy Spirit. And you know, also, you got I didn't get my tongues right away. I didn't even know about speaking in tongues. And um, I, I don't want to go too long on this one, but if you go back, I, my testimony is funny. It's funny uh, how I went into, I got it by myself. Okay, nobody helped me. Now, you can get hands laid on you by someone that's spirit-filled. Uh, and there's Pentecostal churches that do this. Um, and you get it by yourself, which I encourage you to do that. It's just awesome. Okay, um, my testimony is called How to Receive the Baptism in the Holy Spirit. If you subscribe to the channel and you go back in the archives, it's marked number 14. How to, how to Receive the Baptism in the Holy Spirit. Passing the Torch with Jean Shambly, okay? And I'll go, I'll go into much detail about my silly testimony, you know. God enjoys us, you guys. I, I, let me just lighten it up here a little bit. God enjoys us. This doesn't need to be a scary thing. It's a thing that gets you more intimate with God, all right? And will help you to keep your fire. Will help you to, you know, with depression, will help you to build yourself, edify you, to build yourself up. All right, what are some of the other things? Let me skip over to this. Benefits of speaking in tongues. Now, read 1 Corinthians 14, 4. He who speaks in other tongues edifies himself, builds himself up. He who speaks in tongues does not speak to man. This is 1 Corinthians 14, 2. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man. You're not doing this for the benefit of anybody in the room, all right? You're not speaking to man, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. It's a mystery to us, but the Holy Spirit knows. That's why you can be praying secrets to God. I don't think the devil knows either, right? You can pray stuff the devil don't need to be knowing. Kind of cool. It's almost like a code. Makes me think of how in uh, World War II, they got the Navajo, right? Nobody understood Navajo. And it would it helped us win the war because they would communicate in that language and none of the enemies could understand it, okay? And maybe to some degree and to some purpose, that's what God, we speak mysteries directly to God. Let me read it again. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, okay? Now, to clear up, and I'm not going to go into this, there is, this is the prayer language. 
there is um, a gift of the Spirit called tongues and interpretation of tongues, which is a whole nother thing, and it is to be done publicly as a sign and wonder to the unsaved. One of the, I'll get back into teaching on the gifts of the Spirit again. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the private in you, your own language. You're talking mysteries to God because you don't even know how to pray. That's what I love about it. There's times I don't have any clue how to pray. I don't know what God's will is, but I know when I pray in the Spirit, it's the perfect will of God. All right? Tongues of men and of angels. Do all speak with tongues. Do all interpret. Okay, that's the public gift, and I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, so, anyways, have I done it? Have I gotten through all this? Woohoo! I knew this might go a little bit long, you guys. All right. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. Okay? And I encourage you to go back to that other one. I'm debating on whether I should tell you. You know, I, I got... Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit in case you don't have time to go back. Uh, if you're... You don't have time and you can rewind this and I'll lead you just a few minutes ago in how to just pray by faith and receive the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You can do that right there by yourself. All right. All right. Um, so sometimes, and I do want to share this, uh, if you need to go, that's fine. But sometimes, like my aunt, my sweet aunt Frances, when, uh, when I laid hands on her and prayed for her to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, she just got one word, but she just kept saying that word over and over. And she was going, she just said, Abba, 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 Abba. And see, I knew totally what she was saying. She had no clue. She was not a, a student, you know, a Bible student or anything. But the word Abba means father. What was she saying in her heavenly language? Father, 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 father. This was a, a, a brand new connection. That was the word she was saying. That is uh, the Aramaic word for father. Jesus said, Abba, Father. Okay, it's even in scripture. But she didn't know that when she was praying it. And when I first got my first word, I was driving in the car. Just childlike. You guys, you have to have childlike faith. You have to have childlike faith. Okay, so I had been like filled with the Holy Spirit in my dorm room, but I didn't really understand it. I didn't have anybody to teach me. I was stumbling my way through. So I was driving home one day uh, and I was afraid to go back to my hometown because I was nervous because I had lived a wild life in my hometown, got spirit filled in, in college. And I'm thinking, Lord, am I going to get dragged back into my old life? I don't want that. I was nervous. And so the Lord began to minister to my heart, and he said, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. I want you to think of this town as a new town, because you're new for you. It will be new. And this word from my spirit, now the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Okay? So from my belly region, my spirit region, it just felt like this word floated up to my tongue, and by faith, I spoke it out. Shabbat. 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 And I didn't know that was tongues. I just thought, wow, God's playing word games with me. He's giving me a new word to think about my new town. This is what he's calling my hometown Statesville, Shabbat. Okay? I later learned that's actually a Hebrew word, and I can't remember what it's for praise or something, but it was another it was actually, I was speaking Hebrew. I don't speak Hebrew, okay? But, um, and a little bit later, someone brought me information on the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And it said, if you get your one word, just in faith, you just continue to worship God and just say your one word and it will increase. Then I got a whole phrase of in tongues. And then uh, many, many months later, I walked into a, a spirit-filled church and I heard them singing in tongues. It's the most beautiful thing I'd ever heard. And that set me on a quest. I wanted to have full language, full freedom. Okay? I did not get this, the, just the full, a lot of people do. They get it all at once. Bam, you know, I've, I've laid hands on people seeing that happen. 
that was not my experience. So whatever your experience is your experience, okay? But I'm saying if all you get is one word, don't be discouraged, okay? In faith, yield your tongue to God and you tell him in faith, Lord, I'm going to keep saying this word until you increase my this heavenly language, until you increase, all right? You just don't give up, you guys. So many people will get hands laid on and they, oh, well, I didn't get it. Therefore, I don't not supposed to get it. I'm one of the ones that won't get it. I'm one of the ones. This is what the devil tells you. I'm not worthy of it. I sinned last week. This is what the devil tells you. Don't you ever let that stop you. Like I said, the devil's going to fight this. You get it. You sound stupid. You sound crazy. No. You know what the Bible says. You know the Bible says over and over. I just read it to you. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke with other tongues. You have God's word. You have God's promise. You have God's word on it. Why would you listen to anybody else? Anybody else's opinion. Why would you listen when you have God's word over and over and over? Okay? Rewind this thing. Go back and you write down every verse that I said and you go back and you read and you see it for yourself we can't it's good we don't want to be just hearsay Christians I encourage you to do that you see it for yourself so once you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and somebody comes up and says to you hey that's of the devil you're gonna say sorry I know what the word says I can give you chapter and verse and you be at peace now, you know, if somebody doesn't, they're not comfortable with it, they don't want it, fine. It's not a salvation issue. You can be born again. You are, the Holy Spirit comes with that, all right? You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, all right? It's just some of us want more. We want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. We want to be fully immersed, okay? And it, there's another place that says, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't just speak in tongues once, and that's it. This is something that needs to become a part of your prayer language. And I don't have the scripture out, but the Apostle Paul, oh, maybe I do have the scriptures, or do I not? Lord... Paul said so much about it, and I didn't write it down. All right, 1 Corinthians. Oh, I do have it. 1 Corinthians 14, 39. Write this down. Do not, this is Paul speaking, do not forbid to speak with tongues. Paul's rebuking him. So if you're around people or, or somebody doesn't want to speak with tongues, that's fine. But to you, Paul says, don't forbid others. Do not forbid to speak with tongues. You're not, we got to quit fighting in the body of Christ. We have to live by the word of God. If you don't want it, that's fine, but don't forbid others. Don't put down others. Don't tell others this is of the devil because you're going against scripture. All right? Okay, a lot of scriptures I read you, okay? Lots of it in the Bible. I didn't even get to every, there's a lot more. 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Tongues is for a sign if there's an interpreter. Now that is actually the gift of tongues and interpretation. That's a gift of the Spirit. So let me skip that one. Now here's Paul saying 1 Corinthians 14, 18. Paul says this. I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. He's saying to whoever this crowd is, I speak with tongues more than all of you. Okay? Paul is not against speaking in tongues. Now, what people do is they jump over uh, to 1 Corinthians 13, where Paul is really telling them to get their priorities straight. Okay? He says, you can speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but if you have not love, you, you're a gong and a a symbol, okay? And some people look at that and say, oh, see, Paul's being negative about tongues. And they take that one thing out of context and say Paul's against tongues. If you read the chapter before it and after 
after it. You can't say that. You know, the Bible wasn't divided up into chapters. This was a letter without numbers and divisions. It was a letter to the Corinthians. Okay, so you have to read what's before and what's after. And, and that doesn't fly that Paul was against tongues at all. He said, like I read, do not forbid to speak tongues, 1 Corinthians 14, 39. He says, uh, for, 1 Corinthians 14, 5, Paul says, I wish you all spoke with tongues. Do we trust the apostles? Do we trust Paul? Do we trust them? I do. Here he is. I wish you all spoke with tongues. And as far as that lie that it's not for you, there's another promise. Okay? God does not show favoritism. All right? He doesn't show favoritism. If it's for one, it's for another. He will not withhold from you. Okay? Just because you had a bad experience, you didn't get it the first time, like I said, there's an asking, a knocking, and a seeking. Don't you give up. And if you've spoken tongues years ago, all right, you need to do it again and be being filled. Continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It needs to be a part of your life, a part of your daily life. It helps a lot. He's the helper, you guys. That's one of his names. And he's a comforter. If you're depressed, you need to be praying in tongues. Let him comfort you. It's just awesome. All right. So Paul says, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Okay. So what is he saying? When he prays in tongues, you don't know what you're saying. You don't, your understanding is unfruitful. And then he goes on to say, I pray in tongues. I pray in the spirit without understanding. And I pray with understanding. You pray in English and you pray in tongues. Both. Do both. It's good to do both. Okay. This is what Paul says. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. These are not my words, you guys. They're his. But those are some benefits Paul, I wish you spoke, I wish you all spoke with tongues. This is what Paul says. And I'll tell you, it's been the, one of the greatest blessings in my life to help me get going, to edify and build up my own spirit. You know, the devil fights me hard and he fights you hard too. Uh, and this is a gift to us to help us to build our spirits, okay, to build us up, to edify us. It's a blessing. It's a help. Holy Spirit helps us pray when we don't know how to pray. And mysteries, the devil can't hear. He don't know what you're saying. You don't either. That's where faith comes in. That's where you walk by faith. And really, and you think about this, you are saying it's a worship to God. I trust you because your Bible says this. I yield my tongue completely, 100% to you. And I'm going to trust that the words that I'm speaking out of my mouth are from you. Because you promised that you would not give me something that's not holy. This is the Holy Spirit. All right? So, God bless you guys. It is such a joy and a pleasure to be here with you. I am excited um, you can reach me at jctorch, T-O-R-C-H, jctorch at yahoo.com. If you have any questions that you don't want to be public, please, you know, write something public down there. That's fine. But you can also write, uh, send a private message. You can give your testimony. I would love to hear about it. Um, if you feel like you need a little help, you need, I will be praying for you. But um, I do make myself available at least through the end. Uh, this is uh, November 2021, and I will be checking the, these emails all the way, you know, I will take it in segments. I will go all the way through the end of December 2021, and we will reevaluate. I may have another way to do it, so I don't want to commit. But I'll be looking at it, you guys. I'll be checking it every few days. Um, God loves you. I am excited for you. And I hope that for those that had in, 
intimidation or trepidation, or maybe you've been taught that it was wrong, that you, again, will rewind this, write down the scripture references. You don't have to take my word for it. You don't have to take grandma's word for it. You don't even have to take a preacher's word for it. I want you to take Jesus' word for it. I want you to take uh, the Apostle Paul. I want you to take uh, Peter's word for it. Uh, the Apostle Peter. I want you to take the Bible's word for it. And in that, you can have peace. And maybe you've been thinking you were doing something wrong. All right? And those of you that have not received, don't give up. If you need to find a church that can lay hands on you, that's fine. I have seen people that, uh, I don't know. If you can get it by yourself, do it. If you need help, you need help. You know, we see both, you know, we see in the scripture where the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost and we're no laying on the hands there. And then we see where uh, Paul and Peter laid hands and they received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So I'm going to stop. I know this went a little long, but God bless you. I love you. I'm excited to hear from you. I really hope that this cleared up some misunderstandings for those. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to argue with anyone. If you put in arguments, you know, you are free to believe what you like. If it's not something you're comfortable with or you don't want at this time, that's okay. We're, I'm still your sister. You're still my brother and sister in Christ. We don't need to disfellowship. You don't need to quit listening to the teachings or, or whatever, but you don't need to divorce me. We don't need to divide over this. It's not a core issue. It's not a born again issue. All right. This is not something you have to have to go to heaven, but it sure is something that helps you a lot on the earth. Okay. Um, Yes, there is a scripture. Like when we get to heaven, we won't we won't speak in tongues. There will knowledge tongues will pass away. Knowledge will pass away. You know, uh, but we it sure is an awful lot of help here in this dark earth. It is a lot of help. There's times when I can start praying in tongues, and the entire atmosphere of my house will change. And uh, there's times when I'll pray in tongues over over a matter, and I'll just see it resolve. And I had no clue how to pray for it in, in English, in the understanding. So, all right, I'm going to close. God bless you, Father. I thank you that everyone listening that desires to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, that you would baptize them in the Holy Spirit, Lord. And, and they would just have it with ease, Lord. And that you would just fill them and give them great joy. And Lord, I thank you for your word in which we can trust. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, and we will see you for the next teaching. Again, if you want to send in questions uh, that you would like answered uh, on the air, jctorch at yahoo.com. God bless you. Bye-bye.